Uh, this year I'm presenting work on the implementation of EU forest law enforcement, governance and trade, voluntary partnership agreements in Ghana and Indonesia. So this is part of the, the, the work on uh, experimentalist governance within the European Union and beyond that I've been doing for many years um, in collaboration with um, many colleagues uh, from SASI, uh, ranging from Charles Sable to uh, Christine uh, Overdevest uh, and beyond. And uh, we had a, a very nice panel in the Regulation and Governance Network, uh, which was on um, transnational sustainability governance, um, actor strategies and uh, institutional processes. And so the, the core idea was to look at uh, what happens when you start to involve actors from the global south in transnational sustainability governance under what sort of conditions uh, is it possible to, for, let's say, uh, northern governments and NGOs to engage them collaboratively? Under what conditions instead uh, are they alienated, are they put off, and um, do they, for example, uh, either combat the sort of uh, uh, environmental initiatives or form their own initiatives uh, which go off in a different direction. I, I know that it will have an influence on policy matters and it has already done so. So for example, this is, a, is the kind of field where one's research subjects are also uh, policy actors or collaborators. So uh, I work with um, international NGOs like um, FERN, the um, Forest Europe Research Network. I work with the, uh, with the European Commission. There has been a, um, a five-year uh, evaluation of the, um, actually probably a 10-year evaluation of this EU uh, forest law enforcement governance and trade action plan. And in the independent evaluation, um, you know, some of the papers that I've written um, with my collaborator Christ Christine Over or Divest are quoted uh, in, the, in the evaluation. So there is really a direct, um, I mean, that's one of the exciting things, um, and it's true of many of the, the fields that I, that I work in, that um, you interview people, they, they are your research subjects, but you also have um, a dialogue with them and the, you hold a mirror back to them and that then influences the policy discussion. That's also true of the kind of work that I do on uh, European governance, on uh, social policy, on uh, the European semester of policy coordination, which I have presented at previous SASI conferences. I, I have definitely seen SASI uh, change. I mean, in a sense, I, I mean, a, I have a curious relationship with SASI from a, a very early stage. Um, I was friends and colleagues with many of the most active people uh, within SASI, even in the 90s. Um, Wolfgang Strake, uh, Rogers Hollingsworth, uh, and so on. But I didn't come regularly to SASI conferences. And I really got uh, involved in SASI in the mid 2000s when I became uh, an editor of Socioeconomic Review, the, um, uh, the society's journal, and then I uh, became a member first of the uh, Executive Council and then uh, president of the, uh, the association. And um, you know, the, I've seen the change, um, you know, very, very strikingly. It was, it was mentioned at, um, you know, today's um, closing uh, or awards cer ceremony that SASI's membership has doubled since 2008. I was uh, president in 2010 and 2011. And, um, you know, I think that um, I very much participated in that expansion. Some of it, as, um, as Akos um, uh, mentioned, had to do with what was happening in the world. That is the fact that um, uh, we had a global financial crisis and uh, alternative understandings, alternative socioeconomic understandings 
of how the financial system, how political economy works, uh, were very attractive to a large number of people, including uh, young scholars. So that's part of the story. We made some organizational changes. We reinforced in various ways uh, the, uh, the organization of SASE. And one of the things that we did, um, which I'm particularly proud of, is that we um, really launched ourselves in terms of expanding beyond Europe and North America. I don't know what proportion of the participants in, in this SASE are from um, Latin America or from Asia or from Africa, but it is a non-negligible proportion. I would guess it is 25 to 30 percent of the uh, of the participants. And you know, I'm already in. Um, I think it was in 2007 or 2008 we met um, in San Jose, Costa Rica, and we're next year going to have our uh, our first meeting in Asia in uh, in Kyoto, and that's a very natural thing for us to do in terms of the um, uh, the extent to which scholars from and studying Asia are active in SASE.